Hi, this is going to be the second video in terms of concentration versus time. And we're going to talk about second order reactions and zero order reactions. In the previous video we've already done first order reactions, so now we'll do second order reactions. So again, a very simple reaction, one reactant forming a product, and of course we know that the rate of this reaction is equal to minus the change in the concentration of A over the change in time. Because this is a second order reaction, the rate is also equal to the rate law constant K times the concentration of A squared. So this is a second order reaction or it's second order in A. In other words, as the concentration of A doubles, the rate will quadruple because we have to square A. Or if it triples, then the rate is nine times greater. K is equal to the rate divided by A squared. So rate being molarity per second divided by molarity, now squared because the, um, the, sub, the superscript 2, the exponent 2, the units of a second order reaction is 1 over molarity seconds, or molarity to the minus 1 seconds to the minus 1. Because we see that rate is equal to minus delta A over delta T, and that rate is equal to K times A squared, we can set these two equal to each other. And we do a little mathematics on it, and we would find that this equation, if we were to plot it, would not come out to be a nice linear equation. So we do a little bit more mathematics on that equation, and we come up with this equation right here. Don't be concerned with what the mathematics are, just be concerned with the equation itself. This equation is a linear equation. There's your y, which is 1 over a. So a being the concentration at some time t. That's equal to your y-intercept, which is 1 over a0, where a0 is the concentration when time is equal to 0. In other words, the initial concentration plus kt. So k represents the slope of the line, and t obviously is the x value. So again, a is the concentration at some time t. a0 is the concentration when t equals 0. When t one-half, or when t is equal to t one-half, that's the half-life. The half-life is equal to t when a is equal to a0 over 2, as we discussed in the previous video. Therefore, the half-life, when we plug in a0 over 2 into the equation for a here, and when we plug in t one-half for t into this equation, the half-life comes out to be equal to 1 over k times a0. Where we see for second order reactions, the half-life is dependent upon the concentration at the initial time, or the time equal to zero, the initial concentration. And this is a slope of 1 over a versus t based upon this function right here, this equation. We plot 1 over a versus t. If we take data from an experiment in which we have measured the concentration at various times, and then plot 1 over a versus t, if we get a straight line, we know that the reaction is second order. And we know that the slope of this line, excuse me, the slope of this line is going to be equal to the value of k. So, let's say we took this data of concentration of a versus time. All right, We took the different concentrations of a over different times, t, and we made a plot of the natural log of a versus t. If we get a straight line with a negative slope, we know it's first order. But if we didn't get a negative line with a, with a oh, sorry, if we didn't get a straight line with a negative slope, if we got something different, then we could turn around and take that same data and plot it as 1 over a versus t. Now if we get a straight line with a positive slope, we see that this would be a second order reaction. So just by graphing the data, we can tell whether or not it's a first or second order reaction. And of course, getting the slope will give us the value of k. Zero order reactions. Again, simple reaction, one single reactant becoming product. 
the rate is equal to minus the change in the concentration of A time over time. Because this is a zero order reaction, A is raised to the zero power. In other words, what we're saying here is that the rate is not at all dependent upon the concentration of A, which can happen. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen sometimes in certain reactions. So the rate is just equal to the value of K. It's not dependent upon the concentration at all. K is rate divided by A0, or A raised to the zero power. So that's just equal to rate, because A to the zero power is one, and the units of K are molarity per second. So if we set these two rate equations equal to each other, we get something that looks like this. We do a little math on it, and we get an equation that looks like this, which again, is a linear equation. There's y, there's your y-intercept, there's your slope, there's your x, where again a is the concentration of a at any time t, a0 is the concentration at t equals 0. When we think about the half-life, t1 half, the half-life, is equal to t when Remember, when A is equal to A0 divided by 2, the initial concentration divided by 2. And therefore, if we take A0 over 2 and replace it here in the equation, and if we take T1 half and replace it for T in the equation, we get an equation that looks like this. So the half-life for a zero-order reaction is T1 half, right, is equal to the initial concentration divided by 2K. So the half-life which, amazingly enough, is related to the concentration of A, but the rate itself is not related to the concentration of A. And, of course, if we took A and plotted it versus T, if we get a straight line with a negative slope, we now know that the reaction is zero order, so we can plot the log of A versus T, and if we don't get a straight line with a negative slope, we would then plot 1 over A versus T, and if we don't get a straight line, a linear relationship with a positive slope, then we can plot just plain old A versus T, and if we do get a straight line with a negative slope, we know that this is a zero-order reaction. Here's a summary of the kinetics of zero-order, first-order, and second-order reactions. So basically, these are all the equations that we just developed in the previous few slides. So, that's this, that's the end of this video, and if you have any questions, of course, see me in class tomorrow. Um, do make sure that you look at, at examples in your textbook, and do make sure that you are working on problems and asking questions, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.